I'm not gonna tell anybody about this, right? I've already posted it to MySpace. Hey friends, we're back with another terrible movie to rip apart. Actually, I take that back, okay? Today's movie is not exactly terrible. It's just not good, mainly because it gives me major anxiety. <laughs> if you clicked on this video without reading the title and you don't know this yet, today we are talking about the movie Swim Fan, the 2002 teen psychological thriller starring Erica Christensen, Jesse Bradford, Cherie Appleby, and this guy, <laughs> my personal fave. I remember seeing this in theaters when it came out with my friend Missy. I feel like my grandma took us, which is kind of weird. We liked it and all, but we also laughed really hard at a lot of parts. Watching it as an adult, I understand why. There's a lot of good things about this movie. It's very nostalgic. There's camcorders, there's fat back TVs, there's fat back computers, there's dial up internet, and there's AIM screen names. Like what more could you ask for in a movie? But there's a lot of bad stuff too. Apart from like the cliches and editing mistakes, it's just absolutely, incredibly, over dramatically. What's the word I'm looking for? Stupid. Also, it's a ripoff. I didn't know this. This movie is apparently a huge ripoff of the older movie, Fatal <gasps> Attraction, starring Glenn Close, which I've never seen. When I read all the reviews during my research of this movie, everybody was like, it's a ripoff. So a bunch of beige Beckys made this movie. That's what it sounds like. But even with all the terrible things about this film, it is still a hashtag mood, a hashtag vibe, and hashtag I wanna watch it together today. So put on your speedos and swim caps, kids, and log into your dial-up internet. Let's talk about swim fan. <laughs> All you dozens of viewers out there, just tell me how you like this, alright? Welcome, welcome to the show. Oh. What a day. It's time to get dinner ready for the kids, but I'm just so tired from inviting people to my spoiled chef party on Facebook all day. So many rejections. I don't have time to cook. I'm a boss babe. Maybe I should Google. How do boss babes find time to cook? Hmm, hello fresh, what's that? A meal kit subscription service where you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep? Gosh, that sounds amazing for a boss babe. The bossy things I could do if I had more time. This time of year can be so hectic, but HelloFresh seems like it would keep things simple with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time. Then I could spend more of this season with friends and family and my kids, Braylon and Hortensia, who come first and are my world. I don't know though, I'm a part-time pescatarian and sometimes I'm even gluten-free if it's trending. Oh. Okay, it says here that HelloFresh makes eating well easier. Family-friendly, calorie-smart, pescatarian, and veggie options every week. I don't have hours to spend cooking, though. I'm a mother of two. If I use HelloFresh, I wonder if I'll still be able to put Braylon and Hortensia first, because kids come first and are my world. Oh, look, HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including 20-minute meals with quick and easy cleanup and low-prep time options. Perfect for mommy boss babes. Man, I wonder if anyone has a YouTube review. Hmm. Jamie French. I think I've seen her before. In fact, I think she's a boss babe. I should reach out to her. I bet you she would love one of my spoiled chef knives. If you're interested in trying HelloFresh, you can go to hellofresh.com slash jamiesaid14 for up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts. Three free gifts? Everyone knows that gifts are my love language. I'm gonna order it. Ma'am, we have a package. It's a big package. Oh, it is a big package. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash said 14 and use code JamieSaid14 at checkout for up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts. Thanks, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, HelloFresh. Hey friends, we're back. And thank you for watching that entire ad read, which I know you definitely did. So this movie centers around our main squeeze, Ben Cronin, who's played by Jesse Bradford, who by the way, I looked him up to see like what he's up to now. I really liked him when I was younger. I loved him in Bring It On. I just really liked him. I thought he was a good actor. I thought he was really cute. I really like how he always holds his lip like this. That's him throughout the whole movie of Bring It On and Swim Fan. And I was curious to see what he's up to now. And he's living his best, you guys. He's like an outdoorsman now. He's come a long way since this, um this dumpster fire. So shout out to him. So he plays a character named Ben Cronin. Ben Cronin has it all. He is the star swimmer athlete in his high school. He's good looking. He has a cool car. Does he have a cool car? 
I take that back. He uh, he has a car. He's got the beautiful girlfriend and they have this wonderful, like very non-toxic relationship. You know, in my opinion, is not realistic of a high school experience, but nonetheless, he's got it all until all of that is flipped upside down when Madison, the new girl, shows up to school, who turns out to be a murderous, psychotic, bobby pin-wielding lunatic. No one will ever shows up out of the blue, ruins everybody's lives, and eats all their steak. You know, like a typical high school mean girl. I wonder what's gonna happen. Let's watch it together. Morning, sir. Hey, Ben. <gasps> oh my God, Cher's dad, Cher's dad, Cher's dad, Cher's dad. What do I do? What do I do at Cher's dad? Hey, can you relax? It's just a teen thriller rip off of Fatal Attraction. Oh, okay, she's right. Stanford scouts are flying down here a week from tomorrow. Stanford scouts are flying down here a week from tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Okay, so two minutes into the movie and we already have a giant cliche, which is that there's a big meet coming up and that talent scouts from Stanford are coming. Talent scouts are always from Stanford or Harvard or Duke. All those schools that like none of us were actually smart enough to go to or ambitious enough. Oh, California boy. Oh, oh, can I have your own girl? Hey, congratulations, man. <gasps> oh my God, Paul, Paul, Paul. Cher's dad, Paul. Cher's dad, Paul. Hey, can you relax? It's Paul from Raise Your Voice. It's Paul from Raise Your Voice. John Ritter. John Ritter. I know his name, okay? But I like to refer to people how I like to refer to them. Don't yell at me in the comments about it. I was really excited to see Paul, but now that I'm looking and watching it again, I realize that he has a crust ash, which makes me a little bit less excited to see him. But nonetheless, I'm happy that he's here. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, meet Dante. Dante is like the school pariah, the nerdy guy trope, you know? He's the guy that all the cool guys in school, like they really wanna bully him, but they're secretly too intimidated. They do that whole- You're not worth it. Forget about it. Which is just low key code for, I don't actually think I could beat you up. Anyway, more about him later. Excuse me. I can't get this stupid thing open. Enter Madison. She is the villain of the movie. And I'm late for English. Do you think you could- I can't get my locker room in because I'm a dumb blonde bimbo and I need to be saved. They gave me the combination, but- Oh, they gave you the combination? But you couldn't open your locker? This is the oldest trick in the book and I'm upset that he fell for it. Hey, um, that right there. This? And there it is right there, friends, the infamous hairpin. The hairpin will come back in a very absurd and nonsensical way, so pay attention. Morning, Benjamin. Hey. I forgot to tell you guys about Josh. Josh plays Ben's like best guy friend who's also on the swim team, but he's not as good. I really like Josh's choice of locker decor. I love that the word fetish is just taped on there. He cut the word fetish out of a magazine and taped it on the inside of his locker. <laughs> Along with what looks like a woman with her head ripped off, a pair of eyes, some lips. What is this? I don't know what this contraption is. It almost looks like a barbell with weights on the end. I feel like the director was like, hey, what are teenage boys uh, put in their lockers? And then the script supervisor was all like, fetish, lips, and chips. That's exactly what I would have in my locker if I was a teenage guy. Even though this guy's like 34 years old. So, Madison Bell. The reason she's up here is her family's all in Europe. She's staying up here with her cousin. Guess who her cousin is? Who's your cousin? Christopher Dante. <laughs> Christopher Dante. <laughs> Okay, so Jesse Bradford has mastered the facial expression of all the young girls on TikTok, but he has not mastered the confident guy laugh. <laughs> I don't know what that sound was. So one day when driving home from school, Ben almost hits Madison because she's jaywalking. He ends up giving her a ride home. She purposefully leaves something in his car so that he has to come back and see her. Where else have we seen this? We saw it and he's all that, right? With Addison Ray. He goes to her house and Christopher, the nerdy guy from earlier, he answers the door because he huh? is Madison's cousin and he makes really fun facial expressions. Christopher, why didn't you tell me I had a visitor? Am I doing it? Am I doing it? Between that and the creepy pervert glasses, they don't really want you to like Christopher, but by the end, you will like him, trust me. So in case you guys aren't following along here, Ben shows up at her house to return her notebook, takes her out to dinner, has tons of eye contact with her. This needs to stop. Nah. Takes Madison swimming and then cheats on his girlfriend. Okay, a little secret. So after the cheating occurs, Ben drives Madison home and they're all like, so, 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 
That's so. What do you think about this clearly visible camera crew guy? Man, that is so clear. I can even see that one guy's wearing a red shirt and jeans. <laughs> that rules. So before Ben drops Madison off, they both kind of agree to not tell anybody. She doesn't want to tell anybody because she doesn't want to be a locker room joke. He obviously doesn't want anybody to know because he just cheated on his very sweet, kind, pretty girlfriend, right? Well, wrong. Things start to get a little, a little weird. Madison starts doing some sketchy stuff. She leaves like little flowers in his locker. She's not exactly holding up her end of the deal that they made. It gets really uncomfortable at this party that they go to. Hey, something. What? I want you to meet. This is my boyfriend, Ben Cronin. Nice to meet you, Ben Cronin. Madison Bell. Nice to meet you. Let's go. Let's go. Nice to meet you. Well, this is awkward. First of all, I love this party. There's a camcorder, there's a pager, and one of the kids says that they're gonna go on a video run. <laughs> I'm making a video run and your truck's blocking me. Do you guys remember video runs? Man, I miss those days so much. You'd all be hanging out and somebody'd be like, hey, let's go to Blockbuster. I I'll go, no, you stay, you take my car, you go. I'll take your car, let's go to Blockbuster. Awkward. She's starting to show more creepy signs and more red flags are coming up, like with her personality, like my anxiety is. It's not quite here, it's like right here right now. <laughs> so later that night, they're on AOL chat. I actually don't know if it's AOL. What is, what is it? Let's see here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like who his internet service provider was at this time and it's just very unclear. He looks to be on some sort of swim, <laughs> swim enthusiast website. 2001 swim news. But then right here, there's a chat button. This must be like a swim enthusiast website slash chat room where you can meet other fans of swimming. Other swim fans, if you will. <laughs> So Madison starts messaging him. Her screen name is SwimFan85. What was your guys' AOL screen name? Mine, I had a lot of them, but my favorite one was Pretty in Pink 89. Pretty in Pink 89. Pretty was spelled with an I. <laughs> had to be unique, you know? Her messages are getting super desperate. She's like, why don't answer? Yeah, Ben. Why don't answer? Are you busy practicing your Elvis face? What do you mean? He shuts her down yet again. He's like, look, I'm busy. I'm studying TTYL. And I guess it ticks her off because then the computer tells him SwimFan has long off, even though her screen name is SwimFan85. Continuity. So guys, the plot starts to thicken. When Ben comes home from school one day and Madison is just in his house, chilling with his mom, looking at Ben's baby pics. Why you always lying? How long has she been here? I don't know, about 20 minutes. Who is she? It's so stupid. I just love how the mom in this movie is just too dim-witted and stupid to realize that this is weird. Like I guarantee if a kid came over that my mom had never met and never heard me talk about and was just like, hey, Ange, I just moved into this neighborhood and I've spoken to your daughter twice. Can I see her baby pictures? My mom would have been like, uh, maybe not. Let's call your parents and get you a ride home. Not Ben's mom, she's not a regular mom, she's a cool mom. So Ben tries yet again to tell her, look, Madison, this is not a thing. You and I, I'm not feeling it. I have a girlfriend, leave me alone. She doesn't take the news well. She doesn't handle it as well like as I would have handled it. Look, Ben, I think it's really weird that you won't watch Netflix with me anymore. I think that you're misunderstanding. Okay, let me rephrase, you're boycotting them because they took your favorite show off. Right. Friends, exactly. Okay, well, Friends isn't the only show in the world, Ben. Um, you're just coming on a little strong, you know? Okay, fine. What do you want to watch tonight? I told you. Ricky Lake, again? Are you serious? Yeah, I guess I am. I'm sorry. No, no, you know what? I am not sitting through that my cat is also my dad episode again. And on that note, friends, we have to take a short break. And when we come back, stuff gets murdery. See you there. Hey friends, we're back. And you have back. 81 new emails. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ben has 81 new emails. You have 81 new emails. From Madison. Crazy, right? Like she didn't even try to play it cool or act cool at all. 81 new emails from SwimFan85 and guess what? They are suggestive and they are lewd emails and they're inappropriate. <laughs> Who are you, Josh? That's cool.
Can someone explain to me why Josh is laughing? The movie gets kind of boring for a little bit. Madison ends up with Josh. She meets Randy. <laughs> I'm ready. So Ben goes over to his girlfriend's house to just kind of reassure her that everything's okay because she can sense that something's off. And the scene is not remotely important to the movie. The only important thing is this weird dance that this extra in the background is doing. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> That literally looks like someone back there is like having an invisible, is having a sword, an invisible sword fight. <laughs> Am I crazy? Am I the only one? I'm upset about it. One day in the locker room, Ben finally gets angry enough and he just, he lets Madison have it. He's like, Madison, look, I'm trying to drop you. Finally like speaks forceful enough, which of course sends her into super psychotic murder mode. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. One. So something I forgot to tell you guys is about Ben's job, okay? Ben works with his mom. He delivers pills to patients at a hospital that gives all of its patients the exact same medications. There's this patient there named Mr. Tillman who he really likes. He has like a good rapport with. Normally they kind of joke around. They banter back and forth about really creepy things. Scouts are coming next week. Girl Scouts? No. But in this scene, Ben doesn't want to banter with Mr. Tillman. He's got a lot on his mind. What's wrong? Can you take the pills? I'm kind of running late. Mr. Tillman ends up going into cardiac arrest like right as Ben walks out of the room after he gave him his medication. Miss Egan, I checked and rechecked the meds. But he must have switched the cups around in my car. Yeah, yeah, or maybe you mistook Mr. Tillman's cup for one of these other 20 cups that have the exact same pills inside them. <laughs> Easy mistake. <laughs> Just, Just kidding, kidding, it was Madison. Madison. Madison's starting to harm people. She's harming like Garmin, guys. So Ben gets fired from his job. He runs weird. He confronts Madison, breaks her cello, tells her to stop visiting him. You're gonna stop visiting me? That was the part that me and my friend laughed at when we saw it in theaters. You're stop visiting me? <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. And Madison is just like getting worse by the second. She ends up telling everybody at school what happened. So his girlfriend, Amy, finds out he runs weird again. He angrily eats an apple. He at least doesn't try to deny what he did, which I thought was good. He just is apologetic. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Teenage guys from my high school would have been like, no, uh, no, I didn't. No, I, I literally saw you, I was there. No, uh. I watched it happen. No, man, that was T-Dog, man. Who? T-Pain. What? What? So guys, it's the night of the big swim meet. The scouts are there and everything. Ben has to pee in a cup first to test for like steroids and stuff. And wouldn't you know it, he tests positive. You are tested positive for anabolic steroids. Oh. Leave the pool area. Go clean up your locker, you're off the table. I don't take steroids. I wonder who's responsible. <laughs> for real though, how did she do that? You helped her. You know, screw you, Ben. Screw you. <gasps> Josh, Joshy Poo, traitor. So Ben decides to go for a swim. I guess he's like still allowed to have his swim locker, even though he got literally kicked off the team and was told to clean out his swim locker. He opens his locker to a baseball bat and he's like, oh weird, who put this in my locker? Ah, who knows, I'll just set it aside and not investigate. So he goes for a swim, but his swim is interrupted when he hits his head on his dead friend Josh's head. <laughs> He didn't see the entire dead body floating in the pool before he jumped in it. Okay, hold on a minute. Where did all that blood go? <laughs> that fake blood that was like floating in the water when he first hit his head, it's gone. Mysteriously. I actually have so many more questions about this scene apart from just the disappearing blood. How did Madison know that Ben was gonna be swimming at that exact moment and that nobody else would be there? It's a mystery, also known as a plot hole. By the way, if you haven't caught on, Madison did this, okay? So anyway, Josh is no mo because this little 120 pound girl got mad at him and she got him. It happens. I didn't do it. You didn't see anyone else enter or leave the pool. I told you that I didn't see No, anyone. I know. I'd like you to take me through it again. Can you imagine these things happening to you? Like, can you put yourself in Ben Chu's anxiety? Detective shows up at your friend's funeral, anxiety. Everything is gray and blue in these shots. Depressing, anxiety. This movie is, it's not a feel good movie. <laughs> so one day Ben decides to sneak into Madison's room during one of her cello performances. I forgot to tell you, she's like a really good cellist. It's not relevant to the story at all, but I guess her aunt just like invites her friends over to listen to her psychotic niece play the cello sometimes. It's normal. You shouldn't be in here. Come on! Film this. Mr. Frost, do you have a guest? 
course not. That would mean you had friends. Okay. Rude. It's one thing to be a murderer, but to bully your cousin? Wow. Ben starts looking through Madison's box. He finds all these newspaper clippings about this guy, Jake Donnelly. Who's Jake Donnelly? I want to show you something. You go in. I'm... I'm gonna stay here. So it turns out Jake Donnelly is Madison's former boyfriend who is also a star athlete. She has like a thing for star athletes. Can I help you? Why you kids don't wear your seatbelts, I don't know. His girlfriend did, walked away without a scratch. Madison left the room like this. She was convinced he'd come back to her someday, poor thing. You can see Jake's jacket that says the Rollsville Lions. Remember that jacket? Rollsville? Is that really the name of the town? Rollsville, that's where I live. Meanwhile, Madison harms Amy. Ow! I got your page, what's up? Paramedics just brought Amy here. They're saying you ran her off the road. They have your picture. Five, oh. man. Mom, Madison is responsible for this, okay? You, you gotta protect Amy. Hang up. Madison is coming. Ben, look, I'm sorry to break it to you, but she can't hear you. You clearly ran out of quarters. <laughs> Wait a minute, you had another quarter in there the whole time? Time to do some sketchy sh Yes, this, this is feasible. 18 year old psycho killer is posing as a doctor. We stan a versatile actress murder queen. Hashtag range. Well, Mads, guess what? Two can play that game. Guess who else shows up in disguise? Paging Jake Donnelly. Jake Donnelly, please report to the nurse station. Remember Jake's jacket? Jake Donnelly's jacket? The Rollsville Lions jacket? Guess who's wearing it? It's Chris. Chris Topher. Why did I write that instead of just Christopher? You don't have the guts. I think I killed Josh. What? One? Okay, ow, that had to hurt her ear. So this movie actually has two climaxes. One of them is right now. They kind of bamboozle Madison. They lure her with the jacket. They get her to admit to killing Josh and all of it was captured on a camcorder. Saved by the camcorder, y'all. I'm telling you guys, these things, they come in handy. You never know when you're gonna need to apprehend your 18 year old serial killer in a parking garage and get her to confess to all the murders she's committed, you know? You should get one, they're on eBay. Okay, yay, Madison gets arrested, yay. Yes, the 18 year old or 16, however old she is, 120 pound little girl overcame the two grown male police officers while she was in handcuffs. Again, just very feasible. We applaud when things are feasible. So she steals the cop car, goes over to Ben's, knocks him and his mom out with a trophy, picks up an entire other teenage girl who I'm sure would be like kicking and screaming and struggling and gets her down the steps, outside, across the street, into the cop car, across the school parking lot, into a wheelchair, and into the school pool. Ah! We stand a queen who lives. Ben, she doesn't love you like I do, Ben. No one will ever love you like I do. Madison pushes Amy into the pool. Amy is immediately unconscious for some reason, and she's also handcuffed. What is he going to do, you guys? How will he pick the lock? If only he had a... A bobby pin. <laughs> oh wait. Huh? He has a bobby pin, remember from before? This? Wait, he pulled it out of his pocket. Has he not changed his pants this whole time? Why would that bobby pin still be in his pocket? It's been like three weeks. It doesn't matter. He picks the lock. He saves Amy's life. Meanwhile, Madison drowns to death. No more murdering grown men for you, Madison. Bye. That's the end, you guys. That's the end of the movie that gives me tons of anxiety. I hope it didn't give you anxiety. The movie is stressful. So let's look up the budge. So according to IMDb, the budget for this million was 10 million doll hairs. Opening weekend in the US and Canada, it grossed 11,326,601 doll hairs. That's, a, that, that's not bad. Worldwide income was 34,411,240. That's a pretty good profit. And the profits are about to go up because I bet a lot of you after watching this review are gonna go rent it on Amazon Prime where it is available to stream. <laughs> You're welcome, Jesse.
I'm just kidding, I like you a lot. This review comes from an IMDb user named Spencini, and it is entitled, This Movie Tastes Terrible. Well, this is the worst movie ever made, plain and simple. <laughs> I was going to do a Hitchcock outdoor film festival, but it was rained out, so I sauntered over to the adjacent movie theater, and I decided I wanted to see a really bad movie, so of course I chose Swim Fan. I couldn't stop laughing throughout this entire movie. It was hilarious, hilariously bad. It is generally a good rule of thumb when you think to yourself things like, where did that moped come from? Why is there a bologna sandwich on the floor? Hold up, is there a bologna sandwich on the floor in this movie? Because if I miss that, I'm gonna be really mad at myself. <laughs> like I said in the beginning, this one wasn't terrible. It just wasn't good, you know? Made me anxious. <laughs> so that's that for me today, friends. That was fun. But I gotta go chat online with some babes. Pretty in Pink 89 is signing off. <laughs> See you in the next one. I have photos of me and Nick at Blockbuster. It was like the funnest thing to do on a Friday night. Why am I talking about this? Okay. I also love how these star athlete swimmers are smoking and drinking like a couple days before a big meet. Once you get in your 30s, if you want any hope of doing any physical activity, you can't smoke or drink for at least two years before the event. Not that I would want to smoke. Randy slash Paul slash Jason Ritter. I'm still not over what happened in Raise Your Voice, nor am I over the TikToks that you've made about it, nor am I over your character name in this movie. Like you should have fought with the director to not be named Randy. This is a huge reason why this movie gives me anxiety is because of that scene right there. <laughs> Less because of the psychotic murderous teenager and more about him being rude to this elderly gentleman. I wanna know why there are so many reflections of the camera crew in Ben's car. I know it's nitpicky, okay. <sighs> this has Mike been this quiet this whole time? No, no, you know what? I am not sitting through that my cat is also my dad episode again. <laughs> is that fine? You're trying to pull off the whole trash, aren't you? You <laughs> thought about it.